Before learning about axes and planes, it is very important to know the reason that why you're gonna need to study this. For example, if you know generally where the patella is located and what the structures are around it, you can accurately describe its location using your own words. You do not need to memorize someone else's words to be correct. By keeping in mind some of the basic principles affecting muscles, understanding individual muscle function, need not to be so mind-boggling. So if you know what motions a particular joint allows, which muscle must, must span a particular joint surface to cause a certain motion, and what is the muscle's line of pull, then you will know the particular actions of a specific muscle. As we all know that active human body constantly moves, Therefore, you can say it is subject to frequent changes in position. The relationship of various body parts to each other also changes. So to describe the organization of human body, it is necessary to use some arbitrary position as a starting point from which movement or location of structures can be described. And this arbitrary position is termed as anatomical position. Now, look at the anatomical position. It is described as the human body standing in an upright position, eyes facing forward, feet parallel and close together, arms at side, the body with the palms facing forward as compared to the fundamental position of the forearm and the hand is not the natural one. Means fundamental position, it does allow for accurate description. Though the fundamental position is the same as anatomical position, except that palms face the sides of the body. Anyway, keep in mind that fundamental position is often used in discussing rotation of the upper extremity. What is rotation, by the way? We're gonna discuss it later. Descriptive terminologies. Specific terms are used to describe the location of a structure and its position relative to other structures. Medial refers to the location or positions toward the midline and lateral refers to the location or position farther from the midline. For example, the ulna is on the medial side of the forearm and the radius is lateral to the ulna. Anterior refers to the front of the body or to position closer to the front. Posterior refers to the back of body or position more toward the back. For example, the sternum is located anterior on the chest wall and the scapula is rotated posterior. Ventral is the synonym of interior and dorsal is a synonym of posterior. But anterior and posterior are more commonly used in kinesiology. Front and back also refers to the surfaces of the body, but these are considered latents and are not widely used by healthcare professionals. Distal and proximal are used to describe location on the extremities. Distals mean away from the trunk, while proximals means toward the trunk. For example, the humeral head is located on the proximal end of the humerus. The elbow is proximal to the wrist but distal to the shoulder. Superior is used to indicate the location of the part that is above and other refer to the upper surface of an organ or a structure. Inferior indicates that the body part is below and other or refers to the lower surface of an organ or a structure. For example, the body of a sternum is superior to the xephoid process but inferior to the meandibular. Sometimes people use cranial or cephalid, a word root of cephal, 
means head. It is refers to the position or structure close to head. Caudal refers to the corda means the tail and it is refers to the position or structure closer to the feet. For example, quadra equina, which means horse tail, is the bundle of spinal nerve roots descending from the inferior end of the spinal cord. Like dorsal and ventral, cranial and quadral are terms that are used to describe position on a quadrant. Humans are bipeds or two-legged animals. You can see that if the dog in this figure were to stand on it, hind legs dorsal would become posterior and cranial would become superior. A structure may be described as superficial or deep depending on its relative depth. For example, in describing the layers of the abdominal muscle, the external oblique is deep to the rectus and abdominus but superficial to the internal oblique. An other example is the scalp being described as a superficial to the skull. More clear picture you can see here. I hope it is pretty clear to you now. Here you can see the origin, how the muscle is inserting, which is the medial point. Here you have a lateral point, proximal and a distal point. Look, you can see over here superficial and deep muscular ratios. What is superior? Overall, if we are talking about from general body, we can say over here superior, over here inferior, over here you are saying about deep, superficial. Supine and prone are the terms that describes body position while lying flat. When supine, a person is lying straight with the face or anterior surface pointed upward. A person in the prone position is horizontal with the face or anterior surface pointed downward. Bilateral refers to two or both sides. Okay, here are the single line description of all terminologies that you have studied. So have a quick review. Anterior towards the front of the body. Posterior refers to the word the back of the body that is behind. Midline is an imaginary line that courses vertically through the center of body. Medials toward the midline of the body. While lateral is away from the body. Superior above or toward the head. Inferior below or toward the feet. Proximal toward the torso. Distal away from the torso. Cephalid again towards the head. Caudal towards the feet, deep towards the inside or the origin, the proximal attachment of muscle or ligament. Insertion is distal attachment of the ligament or muscle. Prone describes the position of individual lying face downward. Supine describes the position of individual lying face up. The body segment is divided according to the bones. In upper extremity, the arm is bone that is humerus lie between the shoulder and the elbow joint next. The forearm which is composed of radius and ella is between the elbow and the wrist. The hand is distal to the wrist. Similarly, the lower extremity is made up of three segments. The thigh which is formed by femur is between the hip and the knee joint. In the leg, tibia and fibula is between the knee and the ankle joint and the foot is distal to the ankle. The trunk has two segments, the thorax and the abdomen. The thorax or chest is made up of the ribs, sternum and mostly thoracic vertebrae. The abdomen or lower trunk is made up of the pelvis, stomach and mostly lumbar vertebrae. The neck which consists of a cervical vertebrae and head that is a skull are separate segments. In lecture 1, which is introduction to the movement, we studied that orthokinematic motion refers to the joint surface motion in relation to the body segment's motion. For example, 
the surface of proximal end of humerus moves down while the body segment arms move up. Body segments are rarely used to describe joint motion. For example, flexion occurs at the shoulder, not the arm. The motion occurs at the shoulder joint and the body segment arm is just goes along for the ride. An exception of this concept is forearm. It is a body segment but function as a joint as well. Technically, joint motion occurs at the proximal and distal radial ulnar joints. However, common practice refers to this as forearm pronation and supination. Here, the joint is going a supination position. Now, pronation. Now, we're going to study the movements which occur at arms and legs. Flexion. Flexion is a decrease in the angle around the joint. For example, bending the elbow to touch your shoulder with your hand. Extension is increase in the angle of the joint. When you stand up from a squat position, the angle between the femur and the tibia increases. Abduction when the limbs move away from the midline of the body. For example, when you lift your arm away from your side all the way up above your head. Adduction Movement of a limb towards the midline of the body. Example, when you hold your arms by your side. Circumduction is a circular movement of a joint which is a combination of flexion, extension, abduction, and adduction. Front crawl with the arms and shoulders while swimming is the example of circumduction. Rotation occurs when a joint turns about its longitudinal axis. There are two types of rotations, medial rotation or lateral rotation. Medial rotation is also known as internal rotation which means that rotation occurs towards the body. Lateral or external rotation occurs when the body rotates away from the body. For example, opening a lid or closing the lid of a jar, opening a door lock or closing the door lock. Other movements which occur at shoulder joint includes elevation. When the shoulder moves upward, Depression when the shoulders move downward. Protraction is the forward movement of shoulder griddle. Retraction is the backward movement of the shoulder griddle squeezing the shoulder blades together. Wrist and hand movements include pronation and supination. Pronation occurs at the elbow and involves the internal rotation between the radius and humerus. For example, when you are pointing the palm of the hand towards the crown. Supination is just opposite to the pronation. When palm facing upwards or facing the palm of the hand upward is the example of supination. Movement at ankle joint includes plantar flexion, dorsiflexion, inversion and eversion. Plantar flexion occurs at the ankle when you point your toes. Dorsiflexion occurs at the ankle joint when you bend your feet towards your shin. Inversion occurs at the ankle when you turn your foot towards the midline of the body. Eversion is just opposite to the, of the inversion and happens when you turn your foot away from the midline of your body. Here's again the quick review of all the movements that you have studied. Just Give a quick look. Movement which occurs at cervical spine includes flexion, extension, hyperextension, lateral flexion, and abduction. Flexion is the bending of joint which result in a decrease of angle of the joint. Moving the spine forward, for example, if you move your neck toward the chest. Extension or hyperextension is defined as the straightening of the joint, resulting in an increase in the angle of joint. Moving the spine backward, for example, if you move your neck away from the chest, lateral flexion or abduction.
lateral movement away from the midline of the body moving the spine to the side either right or left example neck moves toward the shoulder here you can see how the movement occur at cervical spine You can see how the flexion is occurring over here the example of extension or hyperextension and here you can clearly see the lateral flexion or abduction. Movements which occur at the thoracic and lumbar spine includes flexion, lateral flexion, extension, hyperextension and rotation. Flexion occurs when bending the joint result in a decrease of angle or moving the spine forward for example thoracic moves toward the pelvis extension or hyperextension is defined as the straightening of the joint resulting an increase of the angle for example moving the spine backward or your thoracic moves away from the pelvis lateral flexion is the lateral movement which is away from the midline of the body moving the spine to the sideways thoracic moves to the side toward the pelvis rotation rotatory movement around the longitudinal axis of the bone turning the spine to the side either right or left the thoracic rotates to one side here you can see the movements Flexion of the thoracic and lumbar spine, extension and hyperextension, lateral flexion, and rotation. Okay, now we are having a quick review of joints motion of flexion and extension. You can see how the flexion occurs at cervical spine, how it's occurring the hyperextension. Now you can observe the flexion at arm, here you can observe the extension, how the plantar flexion occurs at wrist joint, how the dorsiflexion is occurring at the wrist joint and you can observe plantar flexion and the dorsiflexion. Now you can easily observe abduction and adduction movement. How the shoulder is having the abduction when arms go upward, adduction when it moves toward the midline. And in this picture, you can see the rotational movement, like over here, internal and external rotation. Now you can see the deviations, which we have studied that there are two types of deviation, ulnar deviation and radial deviation. And here you can observe the lateral flexion on the both sides you can easily observe it now you can see the circumduction right it's the rotatory movement over here you can observe the medial rotation at elbow joint and here you can observe the lateral rotation now neck is rotating toward the right side in this picture it is moving toward the left side and in this picture you can observe the forearm supination and here you can see the forearm pronation. In this picture, you can observe the protraction, retraction, which is occurring at shoulder blades, and inversion and eversion. Planes of action are fixed line of the reference along which the body is divided. There are three planes, and each plane is perpendicular to the other two planes. Sagittal plane, horizontal plane, and frontal plane. These are the three planes. Now see, whenever a plane passes through the midline of a part, whether it is sagittal, frontal, or transfer plane, it is referred to as cardinal plane. Because it divides the body into equal parts, the point where cardinal planes intersect each other is the center of gravity. In the human body, that point is in the midline at about the level of through slightly anterior to the second sacral vertebra. Axes are the points that run through the center of a joint around which a part rotates. 
The sagittal axis is a point that runs through a joint from front to back. The frontal axis runs through a joint from side to side. The longitudinal or vertical axis runs through a joint from top to bottom. Joint movement occurs around an axis that is always perpendicular to its plane. Okay, sagittal plane is also known as median plane which lies vertically and divides the body into left and right. Coronal plane is also known as frontal plane, which lies vertically. However, it divides the body into anterior and posterior parts. Transverse plane is also known as horizontal planes, which lies horizontally and divides the body into superior and inferior parts. In this table, you can see the movements which are occurring in various planes. In sagittal plane, flexion, extension, dorsiflexion, plantoflexion, forward and backward bending occur. Whereas in frontal plane, abduction, adduction, lateral flexion, ulna and radial deviation, eversion and inversion occurs. And in horizontal plane, internal and external rotation and axial rotation occurs. For your ease, in this table, movement that occur in different planes are described along with their description. So let's revise it. At sagittal plane, flexion, extension, hyperextension, dorsiflexion, and plantar flexion. I hope you know how and where they occur. In frontal plane, abduction, adduction, elevation, depression, inversion, and eversion occur. If you don't know or if you have forgot the exact definition of it, you can revise it from here. In transfer plane, rotation, pronation, supination, horizontal flexion, and horizontal extension occur. Whereas, circumduction and opposition is a multiplanar position. Now, we are going to study what axis is. An axis is a straight line around which an object rotates. Movement at joint take place in a plane but about an axis. There are three axes of rotation. Sagittal axis, frontal axis which is also known as horizontal axis, vertical axis or which is also known as longitudinal axis. Vertical axis passes vertically from inferior to the superior and is formed by the intersection of sagittal and frontal plane. Sagittal axis passes horizontally from posterior to anterior and is formed by the intersection of sagittal and transverse plane. Frontal axis passes horizontally from left to right side and is formed by the intersection of frontal and transverse plane. Now, you can also understand this concept like that when a joint movement occurs in a plane, it will always and always occur around an axis. Remember that a particular motion will always occur in the same plane and around the same axis. For example, flexion extension will always occur in sagittal plane around the frontal axis. Abduction adduction will always occur in the frontal plane around the sagittal axis. Similar motions such as radial and ulnar deviation of the wrist will also occur in the frontal plane around the sagittal axis. The thumb is the exception because flexion, extension and abduction, adduction do not occur in these traditional planes. The axis of rotation of a joint may be considered the pivot point about which joint motion occurs. Consequently, the axis of rotation is always perpendicular to the plane of motion. Traditionally, movements of the body are described as occurring about three separate axes of rotation, anterior-posterior, 
medial lateral and vertical axis of rotation sometimes referred to as longitudinal axis as well in this table you can see the axis of rotation plane of motion and examples of the movement in frontal plane anterior posterior axis of rotation lies and its example includes hip and shoulder a deduction and a deduction axis of rotation of medial and later is a elbow and knee extension and flexion example and the plane of motion is sagittal plane whereas axis of rotation of vertical or longitudinal movement lies in a plane uh, it lies in a horizontal plane an example of movement includes shoulder internal and external rotation rotation of trunk i hope that now you got a clear concept of axis and planes and learned which movement is occurring in which plane yes this is kinesiology through which you can understand mere mortals study of this subject can even be enjoyable however a word of caution should be given like exercising it is better to study a small amounts several times a week than to study for a long period in one session before the exams just make the thing simple for example the elbow allows only flexion and extension a muscle must span the joint anteriorly to flex and posteriorly to extend The bicep brachii is a vertical muscle on the anterior surface of the arm. Therefore, the bicep flex the elbow. Now you can summarize and have a quick review of plane, axis, and joint of motion. 